So in a way, you, not, you have not been diving the dive. The computer was diving you on that dive. You might have heard that Jewish divers are not allowed to use dive computers. You might have heard maybe some Jewish divers boasting, telling that give me time and depth and I can plan and execute any dive without a dive computer, regardless whether it's 20 meters or 120 meters. You might as well see Jewish divers on the dive sites looking at the sophisticated, sly, cool computers used by other divers while they have been putting on their arms very simplistic gauges in mounts that use bungees. And yes, we do use bungees sometimes. So I would like to welcome you to next episode of our Versus Monday, where today I will be talking about Jewy versus dive computers. So in today's video, I will try to answer three questions about Jewy divers using dive computers. So uh, why Jewy is so skeptical about using dive computers? Or are we still so skeptical about using dive computers? The second question would be, are Jewy divers actually allowed to use dive computers or we are only able to use or allowed to use dive gauges? So a very simplified units. And the last question that I would answer is, is there any secret trick or is it any secret knowledge that Jewy divers have to plan those sophisticated dives using a very simplistic device? And as a and credit bonus, I would say, I will discuss why Jewy divers would have their gauges or maybe they would have their computers on the right hands. And is it something that it's important and is it something that is standardized and why? The first question I wanted to answer is why Jewy is or maybe was so skeptical about using dive computers. So historically, Jewy really indeed has a very long history of skepticism towards dive computers. And this was mainly related to the fact that in the beginning, the dive computers had not been so reliable that the software that they used didn't really allow us as Jewy divers to produce uh, dive profiles that would be useful and beneficial for us as a group of divers that are making sometimes unconventional dives in unconventional sites. So this was mainly the reason, so the unreliability and inability to produce decompression profiles that have been useful for us. When the modern computers arrived at the market, they brought with them a sort of a revolution, I can say, because suddenly a diver could have a device that tells him a lot of details and for some divers, quite complex details. So they had uh, this no decompression limit, this, I think everybody knows this 99 counting down to zero type of feature that they had. So this no decompression limit that they showed, they had the ceiling that they could not exceed, they had time to the surface. So they had many compelling features to use to execute the dives. So suddenly, instead of using a dive table, uh, instead of calculating uh, surface intervals, residual nitrogen times, uh, uh, stops, pressure groups, having tables with three different components that you need to flip to plan, you know, the nightmare of planning repetitive dives for some divers was gone because suddenly you had a very nice sophisticated computer that would tell you everything what you needed to plan and execute and mainly execute because to the planning I come later in a bit, execute safe, fun and easy dive. So having such a smart device, you might think that having knowledge about decompression is not necessary. So all of the discussions and theory about gradient factors, M values, perfusion, diffusion, slow tissues, fast tissue, bubble dynamics, and all of these complicated things, it's not necessarily needed now because, or you can perceive that it's not needed because now you have a device with all of that knowledge poured into it and he is just processing it and giving you out a profile that you can execute, which will be safe, which will be easy to follow. And it will be fun because you are kind of relieved from the stress of knowing and understanding. And then you can easily just put it on your hand, dive to the water or jump to the water and dive. But what it really created as well, it created complacency. So what it created, the risk that the divers would not really understand what is going on. 
because the dive computer is calculating the dive based on certain information that it has and it doesn't know either if you are maybe a little bit weaker today, if you didn't sleep enough, you are a little bit dehydrated, you are tired, you are stressed, maybe you didn't uh, you did have a hard week or you have been tired after you know a period at work that was really hard on you so it doesn't really know you as a human being with all of the factors that will influence our physiology and as we know this is important factor in predicting how your decompression should be looking like additionally to that from my perspective a dive computer tells you uh, where you are now at this particular moment. So it analyzes your past, so the dive that you have done, and it gives you an information about what to do now. But it doesn't, in a way, allow you to predict the future really. Of course, you can say it will tell you what the compression stops you have to do next. But most of the time, it will not tell you the next stop or the next one. It will give you a total time to surface if you're lucky. And then if you have set up your computer right, but if you are not aware of this, you might, and I have seen it happen, ending up at a shallower stop with the computer telling the diver, okay, now you need to make a 30 minutes of decompression. And the diver looks at the computer and says like, hmm, it's a surprise for me now because I do not have, for instance, enough gas to do that, or I'm too cold, I need to get out, or maybe the conditions in the water change. There is a current, there is a storm coming, and I should be ascending now. But because I didn't know and I didn't understand what the computer is really processing and why it is processing so, I was just blindly following it. And I didn't know what the future in a way will bring. So in a way, you, not, you have not been diving the dive. The computer was diving you on that dive. And it's a quite huge difference. And apart from the fact that the computer is diving you in a way, it is still a dive computer. It's a device, it's an electronic device that can have weak batteries, that can have a software bug, that can just get stuck. And there is no control, alt, delete, reset button on that computer that you can just shake it off and then start new because when you are underwater, you can't do that because you know the nitrogen is building up, you are building up the compression. It needs to be a continuity of information given to that computer so it can predict or it can tell you what you should be doing. So with this, with this explanation, I hope that I explain why Jewy is so skeptical about using that computer. So first of all, historically, they have been unreliable. And secondly, which is most importantly, because how easy they are to use and how convenient they are, it creates complacency, meaning that the divers become a little bit lazy and they do not really understand what they are doing. And then through that, they are bringing themselves into the dangerous zone when computers tell them something and they have, okay, I have no resources to do it and I need to force myself to, ex to ascend and potentially put myself into a certain risk. Let's go now to the second question. So are Jewy divers allowed only to use gauges? So a very simple dive devices that tell the exposure, meaning time and depth. So indeed, Jewy divers very often would prefer to use a dive gauge, which is a very simplistic device. And with this information that that device is giving, so exposure, and using a certain strategy that we call a ratio deco, they can actually plan very complicated and sophisticated dives. But as with everything, it's not the complete truth. And we all know that basic, so basing decisions or partial information is not really correct and it sometimes might be even unsafe. So to answer the questions, are Jewy divers using simplified gauges to plan their sometimes very complex dives? The answer is definitely yes. But the second thing is, are Jewy divers allowed to use dive computers, even though super sophisticated computers, and are they actually using them? The answer is yes, they are. And one of the reasons for Jewy divers to use this new, nice, sophisticated computers is nowadays they do generate dive profiles that are really very similar to the GUI protocols in regards of uh, defining their decompression. But most importantly, the reason why we use either it's a gauge or a dive computer and even a computer in a computer mode, so in the sophisticated, very nice mode, is that instead of basing our decisions on this dive computer, we are using something that we always have, that is integral, it's always working, 
and it's loaded with information that we have and we can load more and more information to it and based on it we can make an inform informed decision and it's our brains. We always take it with us, we do have that knowledge that we can process and we can decide ourselves what we would like to do. When I look at GUI training, DAC protocols and the whole system, we are all circling always around three questions. Why? What? And so what? Which means we like to understand why things happening in a certain way, what are the things hap that are happening really, and what consequences these have on me as a diver and on the decision that I take. And now you might even hear that Jewish divers are making aggressive dives, which doesn't mean that we are cutting decompression short or we are doing something actually bad for us because we do want to make the dive safe, fun and enjoyable, but we, and we are really conservative in our approach. And if you would take any jury course, you will see how this conservatism is built into our training and the procedures that we have. And apart from this conservatism in our approach, we are as well pragmatic, which means that we like to simplify things in a safe way. So not cut corners really, but to understand why things happen, why they happen, what consequences they have. And having this pragmatic approach, making the dive planning simpler, the ex execution simpler, we make the dive safer. So did we answer the question then? Are Jewy divers only allowed to use gauges? I think yes, because we said there will be divers who are using gauges because they use the knowledge, they use the organizational experience, meaning the thousands of dives that Jewy divers do using certain protocols and are being safe. But there are also divers who are using sophisticated computers in their sophisticated modes, but they will still be in charge of that computer and they will be knowing what they are doing, why they are doing it, and what are the consequences. So they will be in charge and not the computer. So let's talk about now the third question that I asked in the beginning of my video. So is there any secret trick? Is there any secret knowledge that Jewy divers have or use uh, if they are diving these simple gauges? Or how do they plan their dives? Not having these sophist sophisticated computers in a way, and using only time and depth as the reference. Because this is how it's perceived that Jewy diver just rocks up on a dive site, you tell him the depth and time, and he just goes because he knows how to dive it. I mean, it's not really that precise. We don't pull it, you know, we didn't pull it out from our pockets somehow based, you know, or wishful thinking. So all of these protocols and procedures that we have developed are based on science, on the decompression theory, on decompression algorithms that have been developed through the almost we can say centuries now um, and when we are planning the dives and we, if we are creating those protocols we are using a software called deco planner that has both Bilman and vpn algorithms in it so we are using those tools to analyze a dive to see if there are any tendencies and trends and we will take those trends those potentially ratios and we will create a very simplified very pragmatic so easy to remember and easy to execute type plan and this is how we will start we will not start by using a famous or you know some tricky or secret ratio that exists we will analyze what we want to do we will create a plan we will calculate the gas that it needed we will establish contingencies for this dive. So all of the emergency procedures, what if, and what can possibly go wrong. And then we find the answers for those, evaluate risks, and then we go diving. And now you can think, okay, it is something quite complex. Do I have to do before every dive? Now to analyze, to use the software, to find trends and tendencies. What is really very good with GUI is the standardization aspect of us because the amount of divers that are trained in standardized way, the amount of divers that are doing the standardized dives planned in a very similar way, allowed us to create certain protocols, simple simplified profiles that are applicable to certain types of dives using certain amount of certain types of gases. So we are talking here about standardization and it's an organizational knowledge in a way because it's not only me making my dives or my teammates making my dives, it's thousands of divers doing thousands of dives every year. So we have this organizational knowledge that would allow us to create those simplified, seems like, rules 
but they are really based on facts and on how we analyze them and we validate them by doing those dives in this certain way. And that's the strength of the standardization. So in fact, there is no secret trick. It's this standardization approach or standardized approach that we have to certain things that allows us to have those. And all of this would allow a Jewy diver to plan a dive and execute the dive, but which is really very important and sometimes it's missed. He will as well understand how safely he can modify that plan underwater to make the dive that he wants. So now this famous statement, plan your dive, dive your plan. I would change plan the dive and dive the dive that you want to have. Because sometimes you will encounter environments or you will encounter situations that you would like to adapt and change. And having the knowledge and ability and understanding on what's going on and not only relying on your computer will allow you to do it. So no secret mysteries. It's all based on knowledge and understanding using the computer in a way that is a backup, that is an additional tool. It's a verification tool if you're still thinking in a correct way. And plus to this, you will have your teammates that will have the same understanding, the same knowledge and the same procedures to help you out as a team to execute the dive that you really wanted to do. So now you might think like, wow, it's so complicated now because I need to have the knowledge of decompression theory and how to plan and build my own ratios and so on. But in the end, if you understand what you are doing and why you are doing it, your dive will be really much more relaxed. It will be more fun. You will be less stressed and you will actually do what you want to do during that dive because you have planned it properly and you understand what's going on. And sometimes, you know, the saying that ignorance is bliss, it's not in that circumstances. You really need to understand what's going on. And if you have done all your preparation correctly, this dive computer, the sophisticated thing that you have, will assist you in your dive, but it will not guide you through that dive. So I hope that with the video, I answer all this questions, the Smith questions that you had potentially about GUI divers. So we do use dive computers. We are allowed to do that, but we, and we are indeed planning our dives and not just pulling out, you know, a secret weapon from our pockets and then just playing heroes and being invincible <laughs> to the decompression. We are aware, we are trying to build the awareness on what we are doing, why we are doing it and making correct decisions. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, sorry, I forgot one thing. I think I gave you a end of the video credit kind of trick that I wanted to tell you still. So this is the last thing that I still owe you. Uh, so the question was, uh, why Jewy divers, or is there any reason why Jewy divers would wear their computer on the right hand? Because it's, and you can always say, yeah, because it's standardized. Or yeah, because they will have the light on the left hand or some other reasons, but in fact, there is a very practical reasons why we would like to have the computer on the right hand. And the reason for that is that all of our uh, control of buoyancy, so the thing that is influencing our depth and the computer or the gauge is telling you what the depth you are at, is kind of used with your left hand. So you can control your buoyancy with the left hand while at the same time you can look at your computer, which is on your right hand. So that's the standardization kind of trick tip that I can give you if you are considering which hand you should have your computer on if you decide to use one. So again, thank you very much for listening this time. Uh, I hope that um, you will post some questions uh, and we can start a nice discussion under the video. There are two places that you can find more information about Jewy using dive computers. So in our standard operational procedures documents, so SOPs, that you can get access to being a member of Jewy, you will find the description of how we are implementing dive computers in their dive computer mode. And as well, we did release recently a brochure called Assisted Not Guided, which is a guide for recreational divers how to use uh, dive computers or how dive computers are used within GUI. So please go ahead, find them in our store online at GUI.com. Uh, for this time, I would like to thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that short talk. I think it still was. And I hope to see you next time in the next episode on the Versus Monday. So thank you very much and see you next time.